Hey guys, Henning and Morton from Flip Normals here. In this episode, we are going to be looking at the new Seabrush 2019, which was announced yesterday and is releasing today, March 6th. This is um, like with all Pixelogic releases, they do their <laughs> own thing. Like what you can see on the screen here, unique and creative, that sums yeah, up. Definitely, uh, that's, uh, that's the new version of Seabrush. <laughs> unique and creative, very unique. Yeah, so it seems like they're now they've now gone over completely to annual versions. Like 20, 2018 was the first annual one, and it seems like they're just going to keep doing 2019, 2020, Which is so a on. nice update, because previously it was like, oh, okay, it's been four years since we had a <laughs> yeah. major release. Oh, here's a hot fix one year later that fixes one bug or something. Yeah, and you end up in like Seabrush 4R6P7, <laughs> like you're ending up with these weird numbers. Yeah. So this is uh, for me. This is a bit of a mixed bag. They uh, they had like a they had their webinar yesterday, and they were showing some of their their new features. The first one they're showing is non photorealistic rendering or NPR. For me personally, this is something I just I just really don't care about. No, yeah, I would never use this. I can see it being used for concept artists, but you know, and and like um, personally, I'm not really into this illustration stuff where you can do it in ZBrush, but I can see it if you're if you're mocking up something and you're doing maybe a concept piece, an environment piece or something, uh, you know, throw one of those filters on there and maybe you can get a cool result out of that. But yeah, like Kenny says, the same thing for me. Uh, I want ZBrush for sculpting and I think the majority of people do mm. and I don't really see the point of this, to be honest. Yeah, when it comes to my use for ZBrush, I'm not even like, we used to be pretty hardcore pipeline, but I mean, at the core, Seabrush for me was always been about sculpting. If you want to use it in a pipe or not, that that's that's up to you what you want to use it for. But for me, it's always about sculpting. And now we're seeing they're, them going really hardcore into non-photorealistic rendering and tune filters. And like, like it's it's weird to me. It's, I'm not going to say that it seems like Pixelogic has lost their way because I don't think Pixelogic has ever had a real <laughs> yeah. clear goal. Yeah. It seems like, like Seabrush has always seemed like this accidental software that's amazing at sculpting. Or became yeah. amazing at sculpting, and you know that's what we want to use it for, and I think most people want to use it for that. Uh, I think this kind of maybe this is a little bit of a going back to the roots of, of ZBrush with um, two and a half D painting, which I don't know how that worked out for them, but I think there's a reason they did sculpting. And I, I, I like I said, I'm sure I can see some merit to this for some people, but I think the majority of artists out there probably aren't really don't really care about this feature. Yeah, like you said here, I think the whole accidental software is, is pretty true. Like when they started in the late 90s, they've been around for like over 20 years now, it's insane. Yeah. Then it was pure two and a half D, which is who the hell even knows what, <laughs> you know, what is that supposed to be? But it's this weird mix between 2D and 3D. And it was a really innovative concept. And yeah. we didn't, I mean, it was, it wasn't super practical, but it was really used for like illustration and you could do a bunch of cool things there. And then they got really good at sculpting. Like yeah. it was, I mean, it was the best one because it was also the only one. And it's still the best one. It's still definitely the best one. Like you had Mudbox, but I mean, it's it, it still just blows everything out of the way. Blender, Moto, Mudbo Mudbox, whatever it is. Seabrush yeah. is by far the best one. But it seems like they really want to go back to this weird two and a half D thing without without really realizing that oh we're actually by far the best one for sculpting. It could also be that they just like, you know, they feel like they've perfected the sculpting. And mm. I mean in terms of pure sculpting, I feel like Seabrush does what it needs to do. Yeah. Where Seabrush lacks for me is any kind of uh software sort of like link you know it, it doesn't work well with other software it's like oh yeah i can send it to keyshot great um do that once in a while but actually working with it in a production is still can still be a nightmare it's really tricky when it comes to it because seabrush doesn't really deal well with scale or well anything anything everything when it comes to production is kind of a hack yeah but uh, also keep in mind that it's pixel logic they don't owe you anything no like they they can do whatever the hell they want with it and they are yeah, I mean, that's, you know, I guess it's cool, but it's also, I think it's the result of not really having any competition. I mean, let's be honest, there, there is no competition for ZBrush. No. Everyone knows ZBrush in the industry, and everyone who does any sculpting does it in ZBrush. Some people do it in Blender, but, you know, it's Blender. Yeah, the moment you, if you start to compare, like, Moto or Blender, the sculpting there to ZBrush. Yeah, or even, like, 3D code. Yeah, like, it's 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 nowhere near as refined. No. It's like you're seeing some of these VR sculpting software as well. They're real nice and innovative, but pure sculpting, like there is, I would say in an absolute manner, ZBrush is destroying everything out there. Yeah. <laughs> and then the next feature we have is uh, Snapshot 3D. 
um, yeah, again, uh, it's, <laughs> it's not to be pessimistic in this video, but for me, I, I, yeah, I can see this being cool for hard surface concepting. Probably. Probably. That's, that's, I think that's what people said about Shadowbox, but it feels like to me Shadowbox kind of died. Yeah. You know, it was, it was cool and popular for the first couple of months. People did tutorials, but in the end it, it was, it felt like an unrefined feature that produced half good meshes. Um, it, you know, it does what it's supposed to, but I just think it wasn't that useful. I'm hoping that, you know, Snapshot 3D isn't going to be just another uh, shadow box, but it's actually going to be useful. And it looks like you can do some really cool things in there in terms of concepting. But, you know, as with most hard surface things, you probably want a real a real 3D software to actually make the assets. And we are getting hate for this, for sure, yeah. because <laughs> people are being loud, but Super is great for hard surfacing. Yeah, but if you want to use it for anything afterwards, then you have to retopo it and the whole... We, we, we did a series on this, you doing... Um, a little quick video of doing like a gun barrel and we were able to do that way faster in Maya or same speed in Maya yeah. but now we had a model which had good topology yeah now it was production ready yeah it was production ready but I mean it looks cool I'm cautiously optimistic about this yeah because I mean, it, it looks like a cool feature for there's sure definitely, there's definitely some cool additions to this and you can do some precise stuff like this kind of support structure or the Michael Pavlovich video where he does a, a sign in ZBrush but you know when you look at that it, you think about okay Okay, if I want to use it for anything uh, that's outside of ZBrush, um, maybe I just want to use like do it in Max, mm. Maya, or Blender, or whatever. But you know, this allows you to stay completely in ZBrush and do hard surface in there. So in that respect, that's pretty cool. It allows you to be way more of a ZBrush cowboy. Yeah, definitely. And not in a bad way necessarily. No, no, no. Okay, then we have how to fix your hard surface that you're making with Snapchat 3D <laughs> with uh, Sear Measure version three. And admittedly. It's cool to get an update to, to Zero Measure. Um, that's even better. Zero Measure, the previous version, version two, I suppose, was super solid. Yeah. Um, so just improving upon that, you know, I've, I've always welcome more improvements to the Zero Measure algorithm because yeah. it just keeps getting better and better. So this is a feature I'm, I'm really, I really like. Yeah. When it comes to something like retopology, this is. This is not a human task. Like we humans are really good at creative things. We we shouldn't spend our time on manually retopology things. Retopology things. We really want to spend our time on the ideas. Yeah. So the less we can fiddle with retopology, the better. I'm all for this kind of stuff. The really, problem really cool. is that um, it's still being an automatic solution. It's never going to place your loops where you want them, despite of zero measure guides and you know yeah. all that kind of jazz. Um, yes, it's going to be probably great for concept stuff and lowering your 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 subdivisions if you need to export it into something that's static that doesn't need to move um, but if it needs any kind of subdivision and stuff I still wouldn't use zero measure no um, but yeah you know zero measure is is a is a fantastic thing that's inside of ZBrush and having that updated to version 3 I'm very excited about that very much so one thing you want to be aware of when it comes to zero meshing is I've seen this with every people is if you are applying for, for a job in a studio and they're asking how do you do the topology and you're like sculpting in zero measure, that's that doesn't look great because <laughs> because what if you need to do something by hand, which most stuff requires. So just be aware that this is still not going to be a magic bullet. No. You still need old school retopology very much today. Despite how many times your supervisors tell you you can definitely just get away with zero measure, you can't. Yeah, you There's, can't. I'm sure you know the spiraling and stuff gets better and better. Mm. Um the you know with with each version but there's always going to be areas that don't look exactly how you want them to so you know there's always that but definitely a cool feature very much so and then <laughs> oh i think uh, i think we can all agree and i think everyone in the comments and i think the entire internet has been screaming for this for i don't know 18 years maybe <laughs> so <laughs> personally i'm very very excited about folders which is a weird thing to be excited about it seems yeah. because it's such a you know such a Hallmark feature of any 3D software to be able to organize your your scenes. See where it's not really being an actual 3D software, I guess it gets a gets away with it there. But now we have actual folders. This was probably a lot more work than we think it yeah, was for probably. them. They probably <laughs> had to reinvent half the universe <laughs> exactly. for this. 
but very, very useful. If, if you've ever worked with in any kind of scenes which have, like you're talking like more than 10 subtools, then it becomes a real nightmare to organize it. This is going to make our lives so much easier. Yeah, and being able to, you know, move, scale and rotate everything that's within the folder and show and hide stuff, it just makes organization and and translation doing anything, modifying your meshes to any extent, it just makes it a lot easier. Mm. It's probably it's probably it's an interesting thing because everything within CBrush has always been one tool. You know, you have well, one individual tool and you apply a transformation to one tool, it doesn't really translate to another tool. But with this, I mean, yeah, I have no idea what they did. They probably did some magic. Yeah. But I'm I'm very excited about folders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've never thought I would say that, but uh but good stuff guys. We Finally. We, we appreciate that. That one that one is great. That one makes up for NPR. Yeah. <laughs> and this one, Universal Camera, this is where I am cautiously optimistic. Before uh, this release here, I was talking to some people and they were asking, what do I think they're going to add? And one of the things I said was, they're going to add something really useful, which is also really weird. And now, so at this point, Zebra still isn't out. Like, the version still isn't out, so we haven't been able to play with it. But I have a feeling this is this version which is really useful and really weird. Like for me, with with universal camera support or whatever it is, is what what I want this feature to be is take my camera, export as an FBX from Maya or Max or whatever, import it into ZBrush, and now I have a full 3D camera yeah. inside of ZBrush. I don't know if this is it. I hope that this is it because yeah. that would allow us to work with our actual scan data inside of ZBrush. Um, it being ZBrush, I I don't know. I like there's not a lot of information on it, and all they really showed in the video was just oh you can change the focal length. Yeah. Um, but what about repositioning and stuff, and like yeah. lining stuff up to cameras? That's what I'm really uh, curious about, and I know people around in studios are probably also just itching to get their hands on this to figure out can we actually do our digi doubles in fully in ZBrush now? Because that would be that would be amazing. Yeah. The issue. I'm, it looks like they were trying to solve is, oh, we, we have a backdrop of, of a thing and now we have the model on it now it has a focal length of 80, now it's integrated into it. Mm. The problem we're trying to solve and in production here is we have a scan of an object, we have a scan of an actor and we, we have a lot of bunch of cameras which are lining up to this. We need to make the scan look exactly like, like or the 3D model look exactly like the scan or line it up to the cameras. Yeah, That's a very different thing because now you need very specific control over the cameras. Because you, you might have 30 cameras in Maya and you have to export them out. Yeah, I mean, one of the, uh, another thing I could see being maybe an issue with this is maybe it only supports uh, one camera. Mm. You know, when you're, doing, when you're doing any sort of corrections of scans from actors and stuff, you have 8, 16, maybe 32 cameras just for the face alone. Yeah. Then you have the body and stuff on top of that. Uh, like I said, we don't really know too much about this feature because we don't have our hands on it yet. But uh, yeah, I'm in the same boat as Henning here. I'm cautiously optimistic, probably more cautious than optimistic. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, because it's a Seaverse feature. But uh, if it is indeed like true camera support with importing and exporting, then that, that's going to be amazing. Very nice. And also what they're saying here as well is they're saying opening the path for rich 2D compositing illustration using the powerful uh, BPR and NPR renderer. Yeah, yeah, see that now that's solving a different issue. That sounds like okay, now we can like Henning said, match the background yeah. image with our three D object and then put a filter on top. Yeah, and also the renderer in ZBrush. You're not never gonna render with that unless it's for some really preview stuff. Like in terms of like we you you would use this Arnold or the motor renderer or the blender, you know, whatever it might be, it's a hundred times better for yeah. it. I mean there are, you know, there's totally there are people that, that just work in ZBrush and, and they Absolutely. do make some amazing things where they just render out all the passes in ZBrush but you know for the majority I and mean, we're coming at this from an up production point of view yeah. and not from a ZBrush cowboy point of view yeah Again, we're, we're nothing, not the illustrators nothing bad about ZBrush cowboys it's just yeah and this feature is pretty cool this is pretty cool so uh, you know, good and the bad. I guess the bad thing is this comes as a plugin. Yeah. So it start like ZBrush is starting to feel like 3D Studio Max, mm. um, which was which is not a good thing because uh, well, I think they are rewriting or maybe they've already rewritten Max. No idea. I don't know, but they um, Autodesk acquired so many different plugins and third-party applications and stuff and integrated it into Max, but didn't really integrate that well. Mm. Um, and there's a lot of stuff that seems to be the plugin route now. So I don't know if these are things that are developed by Pixel Logic or 
developed by other people than acquired by Pixel Logic. So if it's, you know, if it is developed by, you know, in-house by Pixel Logic and it's truly integrated, then, you know, that's super cool. But I'm just a little cautious about these things that just constantly get out as, as plugins. Yeah, I don't want to go and receive plugin. I want, I want to, I want to find this under masking. Which yeah. I mean, I'm, it might be. I don't know because I don't have it. But it's, yeah, it looks cool. It looks like a really cool feature yeah. doing intersection masking like this. Yeah, I guess not so much to say about it. It does a simple no. job, but it seems like a cool feature. Now this as well, being able to store, maybe store color swatches, have predefined colors, being able to work with these two plugins in conjunction, paint your mask, store the colors. Yeah, I mean, it seems like a really, really yeah. cool addition. Yeah, cool swatches. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I like and, it. Uh, Seabrush, the all-in-one digital sculpting solution designed for the pursuit of art. Yeah, it seems that about seems right. about right. Yeah. So another big one is uh, let's just jump over here. Licensing. Licensing. They um, are changing stuff up here now. A lot of people have had questions about this, and I think what I would say to most people is uh, don't worry about it. Yeah. Like uh, you, you'll be fine. It's not like Pixel Logic has been acquired by Adobe yet or anything. Uh, we'll New video coming out soon. But we'll do a video about that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I guess the main difference here is that they have their existing perpetual license, but with two kinds of subscription licenses as well. And it's not like you're missing out on anything. There's the perpetual license here, which I think is more expensive now than it used to be. Yeah, I think they're making it by 100 or $200. And then there's with the caveat that it's one year of free upgrades guaranteed, and which I think is the first year that they're having, they have this specific wording, mm. which could foreshadow a sort of like, okay, you only get one year free updates, then you need to pay for another perpetual license. But I mean, Pixel Logic has been amazing on that front and always given free upgrades. That being said, uh, you should never expect to get free upgrades from a software. So if Pixelogic decides to change this and you only get only get one year of free upgrades, then uh, you need to you know take your pacifier and like put it in your mouth and stop crying about it because <laughs> you know what they've been doing for the past twenty years is like you bought one license for nothing. Even if you bought it ten years ago, five years ago, you've gotten a lot of extra development for free. Yeah, I bought version like three. I think I bought it in like. 2010 I think it was <laughs> and this is nine years ago and I haven't paid a dime since in, in any upgrades it's been it's been awesome one thing which is cool is that they are adding subscriptions to this which oh the word subscription is super bad but keep in mind they're adding it to it yeah, this means that now no exactly so this means that if you're if you're a freelancer and you can't afford like nine hundred dollars ZBrush and you need it for one job you rent it for one month for forty dollars yeah and now you can do that also, the thing with with um, the difference between subscription and perpetual is perpetual, you have this license forever. Like, it's never going to run out. Like, yeah. you can have it forever, but you've got to pay for upgrades. With subscription, maybe. well, maybe. <laughs> At least in... It, you might be. You might be paying for upgrades You might be paying for it. But um, with uh, subscription, you pay $40 a month or, like, $180 every six months, and then you get all upgrades. Yeah. Like, I mean, if I was... Honestly, if I was Pixelogic, the way I would approach this is, yeah, I would probably have that. You have one year free upgrade, that's fine. And then just remove it. Yeah. So you pay for perpetual license upgrades, that's fine. But with the subscription model, you can stay on. So with the subscription model, you get free updates. You know, well, you pay for the subscription, but uh, that's just a running running subscription and you you're automatically get, you get upgraded to the new version yeah. as long as your subscription keeps running. Uh, you can always cancel that subscription and then reactivate it later if you don't need it for a couple months. Yeah. So I think subscriptions is a like we talked about before. Um, I think subscriptions is a is a great addition and yeah. uh, it's excellent for your business model. Yeah. And this version here is for free for everyone. Yeah. Which is really cool. So we are going to be definitely doing more videos of Seabrush uh, 2019 once we have our hands on it and definitely tutorials here and there. We're going to be doing definitely giving folders a lot of loving and cameras. We're, we'll play around with the cameras. Yeah. Let's see how that goes. Don't expect too much. Expect too much NPR stuff from us. But <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below if you want to actually see some Seabrush 2019 content. Yeah, and let us know your favorite Seabrush features as well. We'd love to hear what you guys think about that and what you guys think of NPR in general. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure to turn on uh, the tr press press the little bell to turn on notification so you get notified every time we put out a new video. Cool. Thank Thanks you guys. Watching.